Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta. The metal prices are under pressure, setting off concerns of slow economic growth. Demand from China has fallen and investors await the stimulus to return. Meanwhile, the US dollar index is at a seven-week highs while uncertainty on US debt ceiling just about continues. And the US Fed's June meeting is being watched closely. Gold, on the other hand, has emerged as an outlier as its prices have fallen much lesser than other metals in the past month. The global banking crisis, the US debt ceiling, the massive layoffs have all provided further support to gold prices. And gold has once again proven to be a safe haven. To take this discussion forward on what really should you be including in your portfolio and where are the prices headed, we are now joined by Mr. Pritam Patnaik, he's Head of Commodities at Access Securities, Ajay Keria is Director at Ajay Commodities and Kunal Shah is Head of Commodities at Nirmal Bank. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 today. And I'll start with gold prices first because even as the first quarter and even the month of April was quite strong, May clearly has been volatile, we've seen profit taking and now the street is talking about levels of 1920 or thereabouts as well. Well, Kunal, I'll start with you first. What's your sense on gold prices? There is just too much for the markets to watch out right now. But debt ceiling, if that goes through and the markets are anticipating that it will go through, then is there further decline coming in for gold? Yeah, so first, uh, like you rightly pointed out, the, there is a discussion regarding this debt ceiling. Nothing is moving on right now. Uh, there can be a volatility arising uh, if there is a delay in uh, lifting up this uh, debt ceiling. And that can lead to some spike in gold, uh, but right now the nar narrative stands at we are gold is under consolidation. It requires a major trigger, and that trigger has to come from the weak U.S. economic data or a weakness in uh, uh, other parts of the world, like in Europe. We see a major weakness, something like that. So I see a very limited downside in gold from uh, present levels. So 1950 to 1940 is a accumulating range for gold and. I continue to remain optimistic about the outlook of gold, uh, even though it is corrected today or it may correct uh, going forward. But going forward, the monetary tightening, the quantitative tightening may lead to a slowdown in US and that will eventually lead to higher prices of gold. So uh, this kind of downside should be used as a buying opportunity for gold. 59,500, 59,400 remains good levels uh, to rebuild your long positions. And again, you can see gold uh, during the second half uh, testing levels of 61,000, 61,500 conservatively. So uh, use this as a buying opportunity, this kind of fall and uh, build your positions and you will be rewarded going forward uh, during the second second half of the year. All right. Well, yes, most of the bets really are for the second half of this year now because the one quarter is done. The second quarter at best is uneven, even more volatile and major economic numbers also coming in for this quarter here. But the second half is something that most people are putting their bets on for various commodities. But we'll stick to gold for now. Pritam, what is your sense? As Kunal says, 1950, 1940 could be a strong support. Would you go with that? I agree with Kunal to that perspective. I think 1950 on the spot prices is a very strong support uh, for gold. But let me tell you one thing, Manisha. I think the only thing that the US, uh, you know, government and parties can agree is on and disagree. While all of them keep saying that they're moving ahead with discussions, but they're all sticking to their own agenda. So I think this is going to go to the wire. Uh, I don't see this happening immediately uh, because I think both of them are not agreeing to the requirements that they have put in front of each other. So I think there uh, it's going to go to the wire and that means that there's going to be a huge amount of volatility happening. And during this period, unfortunately, the um, you know risk premium has not flown towards gold. It's gone towards this dollar. So once the news comes across, I think the dollar could weaken a little bit and that could help a little bit support for the gold prices. But I'm more worried about the statements made by the Fed committee members because two of them came across yesterday and, they, you know, we thought that uh, increase in interest rates was a done thing. Okay, We had discounted that completely. We talked about when will they start cutting interest rates. But yesterday, they again kind of opened a can of worms and said that, you know what, I think there is still some headroom for doing some more rate hikes. I don't know whether yeah, those statements should be taken very seriously, because if uh, that was the case, the Fed chair wouldn't have said that for in the month or so next coming, uh, you know, Fed meet, there would be no rate hikes. Uh, but nonetheless, it leaves the cat amongst the chickens, as they say, and there's going to be a little bit of panic and people are going to be cautious about it. Um, so my sense is in rupee terms, uh, 59,500 is a very strong uh, support. If that is breached, we could see levels of 59,000. And from there, we would pretty much kind of continue to go on with the long term uh, opinion of gold being bullish and we would buy at that level. Um, and uh, on the and if, if 59,500 is retained, I won't be surprised to see gold bouncing back towards 60,000. 
Okay. So the idea until now is to accumulate buy on dips and there are no short strategies. There's just too much uncertainty into the international markets right now to not hold the safe haven gold here. Ajay, how are you looking uh, at the prices right now? As Pritam said that the June rate hike or a June pause is what the markets were working with right now. Now there is a 20 to 30 percent chance that there could be a rate hike. And the other thing really is about the dollar index where most market participants felt that we could go to 100 and reach that level as well. Instead of that, we are holding quite successfully about 103 for the last one week now. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, surely, uh, uh, if you see whatever the fundamental we have talked about, the interest rate has already been discounted. It's a matter of 0.25, maybe or may not be depending upon the data point and all, like a recession PR are going on. But I think 0.25 rate hike has already been discounted. We have already seen gold prices testing uh, <clears throat> 2080 level, and now it is retracing and taking a base near to 1950 level. So I hope market uh, has already been discounted, whatever the big stories are going on. But still, the environment, what we have seen since last uh, one and a half year, or let's say uh, poorly in last six months, uh, things have been uh, going very well for gold. So I think this is just a pullback, but overall second half is going to be very much positive because still the numbers are not so much supportive and recession fear or slowdown fears are continuously with, uh, there in the economy. And in part of the inflation, never we have seen in last 10, 12, 15, 20 years, uh, inflation immediately uh, comes down. It will take time. So I think 0.25 is a hardly a risk because of only because of this only we have seen a pullback towards 1950 from 2018 level. So maybe a consolidation zone between 1936 to 1950 could be possible this week only. But from uh, as we enter in the June month, we can see some good buying, particularly from India and China. Physical demand is now uh, expected to uh, again show some sign of strength. Whereas in case of dollar index. It is just a retracement from uh, 101 level to let's say it can go up to 10350 or 104 level, but it won't be sustaining looking to the data and, and all other factors. So we are more bullish on gold and silver right now. Ratio is being slightly improved, but we can see gold adding towards let's say again uh, 2130, 2150 uh, by um, uh, by quarter three end, whereas uh, uh, on lower side a uh, base towards a. Uh, 1930, 1936 should be a greater level to buy. On domestic side, Ruby again play a very important vital role because now uh, it's uh, very close to 80 to 80 level, but uh, a breach of 83.20 will definitely trigger a fresh weakness in uh, Ruby, which can drag towards 83.50 or 84 nearby, which will again support domestic gold prices. So maximum downside we are expecting 59, 59, 200 would, would be a very good level to buy. On the higher side, maybe we can see quarter three or near to Diwali, we could easily test near to 64, 64, 500. Zero. All right. So yes, uh, while the support levels have continued to come down, but accumulation is the major point here. So 1950, 1930 would be the near support levels for the gold prices there. And Ajay, because you mentioned about silver as well, and you said that this is a good buying level here too. Uh, silver hasn't done as well as gold. In the near term, it did well, but it has seen a very sharp decline as well. $26 per ounce has continued to be a stiff resistance. Where do you see supports and resistance levels now for the rest of this year? If someone wants to buy uh, silver, just compare with the gold silver ratio or let's say silver uh, copper ratio. I do remember in 2011, silver was around 75,000, gold was around 30,000 only. Today, gold has doubled, but silver still uh, lying near to 75, in fact, below 75 only. Even the uh, gold silver ratio, which is uh, near to 83, 84 zone, we expect, uh, let's say, in next couple of years, it come down towards 72 or 68 level also. Then also silver will easily cross one lakh mark on domestic market. Coming on international side, we have multiple of times seen uh, support coming near to 22, 23 dollar mark. But on higher side, we expect this year we may see a level like 30, 32 zone. But overall, uh, if someone is buying silver for let's say a couple of uh, years, definitely we can go near to 40 level mark. That is again what, uh, level what we have seen in 2011 was 50 dollar. So overall, on domestic side, we are more bullish uh, because of rupee factor consumption imports are quite high. Uh, we have seen because the industrial demand is there. So maybe on downside, worst in case, 68, 500 or 69 on a day-to-day uh, -day volatility we can see, but this is also a good level to buy and hold. On higher side, uh, we can expect at least 90,000 by end of uh, quarter three or near to Diwali, but this year we may see prices easily crossing 90,000 mark. Mm. Kunal, what's your sense? 90,000, 1 lakh, what are you putting your bets on?
no i would not be that bullish uh, but i'll explain the my narrative the, the narrative is that we have started the year with a major uh, deficit in the silver market so i think uh, silver market started with a deficit of almost 225 million ounces so this is quite huge as compared to the size of the market almost 20% this kind of deficit we have not seen in last 10 years so we are starting the year with a major deficit now the problem going forward will be the slowdown in the demand so what we are seeing in china the, the chinese silver premium has uh, gone down recently hmm. so all these is phenomenon has led to correction in silver futures the dollar index is strengthened so i am expecting conservatively 84 to 85 uh, base case scenario in a full bull, bullish uh, trend in gold or silver going forward so uh, 69000 70000 these are the levels where i would again uh, recommend to please start accumulating for the second half of the year uh the bullish trend is going to continue the deficit uh at the end of the year uh, will be relatively smaller as compared to the start of the year but still uh the demand moderation the slowdown in the industrial demand in some of the segment uh, in silver can lead to some some bit of slowdown but uh, i'm i'm expecting 84 85000 27 26 27 uh, on uh, cme looks uh, very uh, realistic target All right, buying silver, but our dips and seventy thousand could go away uh, in the very near term, and those would be accumulating levels and eighty-five thousand, ninety thousand, as uh, also what Ajay said is a possibility. In in just uh, very briefly, what is your sense, Pritham? What range are you looking at? See, I'm going to look at it very closely right now. I'm saying that if seventy-one thousand is taken off, then you could see levels of seventy thousand, and I would be a buyer at that level. Okay. My sense is that I mean, what two of my co-panelists have also mentioned. I think inherently there is bullishness in these. base um, and precious metals okay there is no taking that away right uh, so 70000 could be a decent level to go into it and my sense is that uh, first level to look forward to is 80000 in the second half of the year and uh, if that is breached i mean i would love to take what ajay said about 1 lakh but uh, i'll be uh, conservatively optimistic and say 80 85000 is what my level is. Okay. All right, all right. We'd love to have higher levels here, but yes, the market has been very volatile, and we'll keep our cards closed. Is what our panel is doing. But with that, we'll go for a very short break. We've spoken about gold and silver, but don't go anywhere because the discussion continues about metals when we return. Welcome back you watching commodity champions let's talk take a look at the metals now where the last 4 or 5 weeks in continuation haven't given you positive returns we've seen metal prices trade quite volatile the individual fundamentals are not working the china's data has been on the weaker side there is a slowdown here the covid cases in china seem to be increasing and the markets have been for long waiting for some solid concrete chinese stimulus to come in which also is in absenteeism uh, kunal what is your sense uh, if you look at copper aluminum zinc these kind of metals we've seen markets move too fast on either side and that is the reason that keeps the street edgy because once the fundamentals start kicking in we will perhaps see the prices rise too much rise too much but at this point in time that doesn't seem to be working yeah so quite uh, uh, rightly pointed out the macro economic scenario in china continue to remain grim uh, we have seen all the datas and uh, the data recently which came out if i start seeing that numbers on a uh, uh, two year cagr basis the demand side is horrible uh, when it comes to industrial production when it comes to fixed asset investment you take any number it is pointing towards a major contraction maybe 8% 10% contraction this kind of contraction is not seen uh, even after the reopen of china so this clearly indicates the property sector which remains the backbone of the chinese economy so 25 to 28% of the total metal demand comes from this sector and we have not seen any revival after the weak data there was an anticipation that chinese uh, government will come up with uh, rrr rrr cuts or uh, perhaps stimulus packages so neither of them uh, came and that's the key reason why metals are sliding the way it is until and unless we see some meaningful support by chinese government we are still going to see another 4 to 5% hit in most of these metals and irrespective of uh, and another thing which has happened is that uh, last year we had a european energy crisis so most of the european smelters were out of the market and right now they are producing metals at uh, at a robust pace so the supply concerns have eased from europe and the demand uh, growth have cooled down from china 
so supply is increasing and demand is contracting how the metal prices are going to move up so we need some concrete measures from china which will prevent this uh, fall of prices otherwise metals are going to go down on its merit and remember apart from all of these i said there is a quantitative tightening going on so it's a very deadly combination i still don't see a uh, optimistic scenario for metals and another 4 to 5 percent is my conservative targets uh, for the downside all right um, uh, ajay what is your sense do you also think that whether it's copper aluminum zinc zinc clearly trading at two and a half year lows the major decline clearly has come in for zinc and that refuses to see start uh, you know opportunity buying even at these current levels but what's your sense as kunal says 4 to 5 percent further decline before you start buying yeah definitely in last one month or itself like uh, zinc has dropped around 12 percent or uh, since january we have almost seen 20 percent fall in zinc prices copper is still uh, trading but i think the concern what uh, we are looking similarly chinese government is also looking and uh, since last uh, five months they were trying to uh, come up with a uh, stimulus or we can say any kind of support to the economy so i think this is a slightly a panic situation because uh, uh, levels has been significantly dropped like in uh, lme if we see copper is around around uh, let's say 8000 or zinc is around 23 in, in fact uh, there are many bankers that has came down uh, with their production uh, uh, projections like goldman sachs has lowered their aluminium copper outlook for 2023 they are expecting around 2850 at least uh, for uh, aluminium and 10000 uh, still they are uh, expecting 10000 for uh, copper so i think uh, uh, second half is going to be very much important because central banks are definitely pushing their whole efforts to bring back the economy on part so i think initially uh, up till uh, mid of uh, june we may see some kind of weakness because g7 has again uh, uh, came out with a fresh sanction triggered on uh, uh, that is uh, again creating a pressure on base metal it is a temporary already prices has factor in hmm. so maybe in next 15 20 days we can see some kind of weakness to be there but uh, i hope uh, levels like 700 for uh, copper is going to be a very good level to take us support because economies anyhow is going to be uh, on a positive side zinc uh, already prices has corrected very well Technically, it shows a uh, support like uh, 208 to 10 level. Aluminium, uh, despite so much of fall in other metals, aluminium is showing since January it has only fallen by half a percent. That clearly shows something has been uh, getting supported. So I think a major downtrend has been already been there. Uh, next 15 days, maybe uh, another fall of let's say 4 to 5 percent as uh, Kunal has uh, already told. But uh, I think uh, as we move beyond uh, mid of uh, June, uh, prices should get a very good lift uh, topic could be aluminium and uh, zinc as of now and copper would take slightly more time but overall i am expecting quarter three is going to be positive for base metal. all right january actually has been the best month until now for this year when it look you look at metal prices and from those kind of levels we've seen a very sharp decline come in pritam what's your sense any uh, top metal trade that you see in this space or would you also say that it's the macros driving the whole sector and another 4 to 5 percent of a decline before you start accumulating. Conditions very difficult to see any positives right now uh, as far as metal spaces goes. You know the surface which is going out in the US markets, right? And the fact that, um, you know, China has not kind of bounced back in the same uh, proportion that we wanted. I mean, let's not discredit them. The numbers have come better, but they're not in line with the expectation, right? Uh, so the, there's obviously there's a huge amount of slowdown happening now when obviously the bellwether of all good economic times is copper and if you were to look at copper action which is happening um, you know clearly there is an increase in production even then in china itself also you see production numbers going up but in terms of demand there's a little softening uh, and it doesn't help that globally also the demand is not picking up so my sense is that br broader base metals are going to find it a little tough for the next one or two months uh, my sense is till the time there is not uh, any inorganic action by the central banks in the way of uh, either a stimulus program being done or aggressive interest rate comes, uh, cuts coming into place. Only those would be a trigger which, on which basis we should try to look at uh, base metals. Uh, my sense is that but everything has its own uh, bottom. Uh, let me, I hope I have not spoken too soon. But I think let's say in copper 700 looks uh, like a very strong support level. Um, because I think after it reached 720, it's been falling and it continues to uh, fall uh, towards first level B708. But after that, I think 700 level is very much reachable. Uh, and as far as zinc goes, 210 levels is again a decent level to start looking at the metal uh, with some interest for buying. 
Uh, as far as aluminium has been moving in a range of 205 to 210. Hmm. So on the lower range, we'll continue to trade on that range basis. If it comes around 205, we should look at entering that uh, contract and exiting closer to 210. And that's how the three strategies is what I'm going to play out with. Not to that. So, I mean, as you guys are saying that the third quarter is going to be better, 4 to 5 percent of a decline. The month of June should start picking up. The only concern here, Kunal, is that these metal prices move quite fast. We already are sitting on strong fundamentals. If there is a stimulus from China, if the Chinese demand recovery seems slightly better, if you see some supply concerns somewhere, then what is the reward ratio on the higher side that you will see building up immediately for metals? I think it is copper. Copper on the long term basis looks pretty bullish, uh, mainly uh, <clears throat> the emerging market demand for copper is going to revive. So for example, India, so I'm expecting, you know, Indian copper consumption uh, can surge from almost right now it is roughly around 1.5 million tons. It can go up to 2.5 million tons in a matter of three years. So a huge demand growth is expected uh, out of India. So there are some silver linings and the EV demand, the copper is going to be the most preferred metals out of the entire base metal complex from the EV point of view. So the EV revolution expanding uh, in next two years also going to, so whenever there is a, a U-turn or whenever there is a possibility of bounce back, I think copper is one metal where, where one should be fundamentally, uh, uh, one should go along because uh, the demand from emerging market is just tremendous. Oh, well, absolutely. And that's perhaps many of the global banks and brokerages also are foreseeing. That is the reason City and Bank of America and Goldman Sachs have talked about 10,000, 12,000, even 15,000 dollars of uh, price projection for copper. That, of course, is uh, four or five years ahead. But uh, four to five percent of a decline in metals and those perhaps would be good accumulation level. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and talking the whole host of fundamentals that impact the metals as a sector there. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champion. Thank you for watching.